Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MTGO Traders. My name is Taryn, and this is the spooky or Halloween tastic mono black vampires. All right, guys, this is the last of the Halloween themed or horror themed decks for modern. Uh, this is Mono Black Vampires, a super aggressive deck that can basically bulldoze anything um, if you have the right hand. Um, very aggressive, very powerful. And uh, yeah, it's got Vampire Nocturnus, so you know it's good. <laughs> Let's jump right into it, guys, starting with, of course, our Indulgent Aristocrat, four of here, one mana, one, one life linker. You can pay two, sacrifice a creature, and put a plus one, plus one counter on each vampire you control. That's very important because it can help us kind of get around uh, a bunch of different things like lightning bolts, uh, collective brutality, those kind of things. Uh, also, it's a life linker, so you know it's good as well for that, too. Next up, we've got Vampire Last Raider, a one mana, two, two. As we give your upkeep, you lose one life unless an opponent has 10 life or less. Um, this is honestly not a downside, so it's basically just a one mana 2 2 for you because you have things like Aristocrat and the Gifted Aetherborn gaining you life, as well as the uh, Calistria Highborn in the decklist as well. Uh, the life loss from the Vampire Last Raider is normally not going to matter that much in the, long, in the grand scheme of things. Um, very, very powerful overall as a one drop. Next up, we've got Gatekeeper of Malak here. This is a two mana 2 2 with a kicker for one. You can pay three mana for this. And if you do pay the kicker, um, you know, pick target, a target player and they have to sacrifice a creature. This is very good on turn three especially if your opponent is playing like a death shadow a tarmogoyf that they're playing like a hollow one something like that where you know that it's like they got it out because they like gimmicked it out in some way or form or fashion uh playing a gatekeeper malik here kind of keeps them honest there and make sure that it's getting around also those uh nice uh hexproof creatures as well so great card here and great at the two mana slot next up for us we've got gifted aetherborn and two mana two three from aether revolt a death touch lifelinker very simple and straightforward but very powerful in this vampire list here uh death touch I think pretty amazing uh, on top of this card. Wish it had flying, but it's not, you know, Vampire Nighthawk. It's just a gifted Aetherborn. <laughs> But next up here for us, we've got Calistria Highborn, a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two Vampire Shaman. Whenever a Highborn or another Vampire you control is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you may pay 1 black mana. If you do, target player loses 2 life and you gain 2 life. This is very good, especially against board wipes and especially against spot removal in the mid to late game of a match. Um, one of the best parts about this is you want to be playing this on turn 3 or 4, not on turn 2. If you, if you play it on turn 2, it's most likely just going to get pathed or shocked or bolted or something where it's immediately gone because opponent does not want to deal uh, with that life gain life loss clause because this is one of those things where it's in a long game that can definitely make the difference because you have things like indulgent aristocrat where you can sacrifice your own creatures and trigger calistria highborn which is very important to you next of course we've got strong kirk condemned a two mana two two discarded card vampires you control get plus one plus one into end of turn activate this ability only once each turn very good card here, kind of a pseudo lord-ish kind of card. Um, really the cards you want to pitch into the graveyard or just lands if you can, um, or a creature if you really need to, or an Aether Vial if it's in the mid to late game. Um, but more often than not, it's going to be a really good removal magnet for the opponent uh, before you get into another card, which is the Captivating Vampire here, your actual lord of the deck list, a 3 mana 2-2. Two -two. Other vampires you control get plus one plus one, and you can tap up to five untapped vampires you control, gain control of target creature. It becomes a vampire in addition to its other types. So very good ability here, and uh, usually if the vampire, the captivating vampire comes out on turn three, we might have five creatures there, and if we do, we're going to want to use this ability to take control of their best creature immediately, because the opponent is going to want to try and get rid of the captivating vampire as soon as possible. So very good card for you there in that slot for the three mana slot, um, and just very good to be able to get out if we have the aether, uh, aether vows as well on the battlefield. And our last card in here, it's another lord, but it's kind of a pseudo lord. This is Vampire Nocturnus, a four mana triple black three three play with the top card of your library reveal as long as the top card of your library is black that's including like a favor push any kind of creatures that kind of thing um all the vampires you get you control get plus two plus one and have flying which basically means you're going to win the match that game that turn or the turn after that if you get two black cards off the top so very good there um you can definitely stack these as well they're not legendary nothing in this deck list is legendary which is kind of insane especially considering we have lords in the deck list too so very good card overall. Um, probably one of the best cards in the deck list, honestly, if you just want to end a match really quickly. Next up to the uh, uh, spells here, we've got just four Fatal Push. Very simple, straightforward, dealing with those Death Shadows, those uh, Hollow Ones, if they path something or, or you know Lightning Bolt something on our side of the field, or um, you know any kind of uh, Tarmogoyce, any kind of like random stuff we don't like, Blood Gas, that kind of thing. Fatal Push can handle it as well. And I've seen some Heart of Kieran like vehicle decks kind of like kicking around in Modern. And of course, Fatal Push can deal with that deck as well. Next up for us is Artifact. 
artifact. So you've got Aether Vial. Only three of in the deck. Could have put this to four if we wanted to cut a land, probably, of the Field of Ruins, but I really like just having three in here. It's very aggressive, keeping your creatures kind of coming out turn over turn. Of course, you can also flash in creatures on your opponent's instep, so that's one of the best reasons to have Aether Vial in the deck list. It does significantly pump the price up on the deck list because this is the most expensive card in the deck list, uh, but Aether Vial is definitely worth it if you want to be aggressive. Moving on to lands really quickly, you've, of course, got two Field of Ruin. This is here for any kind of Tron lands, that kind of nonsense. We don't want to deal with that at all. And then just 20 uh, Swamps, very simple in the, the mana base here, just 22 lands in total. And that's going to do it for the full 60. So let's move on to the sideboard here. Starting with, of course, our Duress. So you could do Inquisition of Kozilek. You could do Thoughtseize. I want to keep it a little bit cheaper here. We're going to do Duress. A one mana sorcery. Your opponent reveals their hand. Choose a non-creature, non-land card from it. That player discards that card. Very simple and straightforward and definitely can deal with control. Any kind of removal, any kind of Jun list, anything with, the, again, lots of like Collective Brutalities, Lightning Bolts, Shocks, Fatal Pushes, that kind of stuff in their hand. Next up for us, we've got Extirpate. So again, kind of a similar card where I wanted to put Surgical Extraction here, but didn't want to uh, pay the price of Surgical Extraction. Extirpate is fine for me. A one mana instant, the split second. Uh, choose target card in a graveyard other than a basic land card. Search its owner's graveyard, hand in the library for all cards with the same name that card and exile them. Then that player shuffles his or her library. So. It's everything other than a basic land, so this does hit Tron lands. This does hit Celestial Colonnades if you do get to Field of Ruin, something like that. This does hit anything else, of course. If they're going up, if you're going up against Storm, you might want to do like any of their Ritual cards, any of their um, like random Grape Shots that they decided to use one pretty early. Just a very good card overall for you getting rid of those kind of uh, big threats where they're like a combo potential kind of card. You definitely want to use Extra Paid bringing in from the sideboard into the main board. Next up for us, we've got Nahil Spell Bomb. Again, this is good against Storm and good against any kind of Dredge or Delve deck. A one mana artifact, you can tap it, sacrifice it, and exile all cards from target player's graveyard. And if you do, and this card is sent to the graveyard, you can pay one black mana and draw a card. So very good at replacing a card in your hand. Also getting rid of your opponent's graveyard. So if they have lots of like uh, blood gas from hollow one, if they have lots of things for delve for the uh, the big angler in those hollow one decks, or if they just have a lot of stuff in the graveyard for a Tarmogoyf, then you're definitely wanting to use spell bomb and just kind of get rid of it for them. And of course, draw an extra card. Next up for us, we've got Pithing Needle. This is good here for, you know, the, uh, the Planeswalker decks, the Planeswalker matchups. Usually control, you're going to bring this in. One mana artifact. If, and, as in there's a battle, name a card. And then activate the abilities of sources with a chosen name can be activated unless they're mana abilities. Again, like I said, Pithing Needle, very, very good there. Uh, and just very useful overall in the control matchups and anything if they have like to, lo lots of Planeswalkers in their deck list. Another card for us is a Damping Sphere. This is here for the Tron matchup as well as the Storm matchup. A two mana artifact. If a land is tapped for two or more mana, it produces one colorless instead of any other type and amount. And then each spell the player ca casts costs one colorless more to cast for each other spell that player has cast this turn. So both of these kind of do, do separate things. The first one, of course, is to lock down Tron so they can't get that seven mana. They'll only be able to tap for three. And the other one here is to tap for, you know, an extra mana every single time they continually do extra spells. Now, one of the things for the downsides for a Damping Sphere is it does count for us as well. So our first spell might be one mana. But the next spell, if it's a one mana spell, might be two mana. So very interesting for us, kind of slowing us down as well. But again, if you're playing up against Storm, you know that that's, that deck kind of revolves around uh, casting lots of cards very quickly in succession in the same turn uh, because you can float a lot of mana and that kind of stuff. So Damning Sphere is a card you want to bring in and just shut that strategy down completely. And of course, bring both of them in because they're definitely going to bring in a braid once they see Damping Sphere. Next up for us, we've got Vampire Hexmage, a two mana, two one, first striker. Sacrifice Vampire Hexmage, remove all counters from target permanent. This is basically a way to kill target Planeswalker or get rid of uh, any kind of uh, thing on the battlefield, like a negative one, negative one counter, that kind of stuff. So very good for that. It's also a vampire with first strike as well. So very rare to see that in vampire. Empires. Um, so if you were being really aggressive against an opponent, you might want to bring the Hex Mage in, even though the secondary ability for the remove all counters doesn't really matter for that matchup. The first strike here does matter a lot for the Hex Mage as well. And the last card in the deck list, of course, for sideboard is Dismember, a three mana instant. Of course, you can pay four life for those Phyrexian mana symbols, which is kind of amazing. But target creature is negative five, negative five until end of turn. So very good against any kind of large creature on your opponent's side of the field. Just some extra removal and extra value against those larger threats on your opponent's side of the field. So going to use this mostly against against, uh, you know, a worm coal engine, those kind of things, even though they'll, they'll definitely trade or whatever, but we can definitely, you know, shrink them, make it where it's a little more feasible for us uh, to trade with those type of creatures. But that's gonna do it for the full deck list, guys. Let's get on to some matches and see how this deck performs. All right, guys, let's get into vampires. I want to drink your blood. That's the best Transylvanian accent I can do. <laughs> Opening hand here has a one lander, but we also have Aether Vial in our hand, so it's going to be a good keep for us. We're going to go Aether Vial into a pass. Seven cards in hand for two lands for them. Going to go for a Seeker Squire. I have no idea what the opponent's on here. Ooh, getting rid of a merchant there. 
Picking up the Aether Vow, playing a Field of Ruin. This is one of the situations with the Field of Ruin where it's like not great because we need that double black for this, the Condemn there. But uh, we'll be able to take up Aether Vow and be fine. Go for the Throat on our last Raider, getting in for two here, dropping us down to 18. Four cards in hand. We're going to flash in a Aristocrat, tick up Aether Vow to two. We get a land off the top with Captivating Vampire. Very nice. Getting in for two here, dropping them down to 18, going back up to 20 thanks to that lifelink, and holding up the Condemned here to flash on their instep. Cryptic Gas from the opponent. Very interesting. Getting in here for two, we're going to flash in the Aether Vial with the Condemn and block with a 3-3 three, three here. Get rid of that off the battlefield. And uh, we're going to continue to keep Aether Vial at two here. Thinking about maybe flashing in a Condemned on our turn here and making sure we can take control of that Crypt Ghast, which is exactly what we're going to do here. Take control of that, make a 3-3, three, three, and of course tap one and make another Condemned on the battlefield. Can't extort, of course, but we have a large board state on turn four here. Turn five hitting. Three cards in hand for the opponent. Do they have Damnation? They need a board wipe. They don't. Nice. All right, let's get into the sideboard here, and uh, I'd like to probably keep what we have. You know, the Spell Bomb might be a cool, cool card with the Explore mechanic, so let's take out the Nocturnus and uh, maybe take out an Aristocrat and then just hit Submit. Yeah, Captain Vampire, every single time I play that guy, if he doesn't get removed on the turn he's played, he normally takes over the match. Three cards for lands in hand, with Aristocrat, Highborn, Malakir, and Condemned. Land for the opponent. I'm gonna go for Arist and Aristocrat and pass turn. Let's see, six, seven cards in hand, going for Overgrown Tomb. Is it coming in tapped? It is. Passing back to us. We have so much mana here, which means we have an Nocturnus on turn four. I'm gonna go Highborn without mana up, so that's kind of a bad decision for us. We should have probably went for the Condemned there. And uh, we're hitting in for one there, going up to 21 here. So if they go for a kill spell, they go for a pass, so we kind of lucked out there. Let's go for a Condemned pre-combat, and then just attack in here. Getting in for three. Down to 16. Not going to use the uh, Condemned's ability just yet for that discard. I want to save that Aether Vial for a big attack later. Four mana for the opponent, going for Phyrexian Obliterator. This would be a huge issue for us, but we have Gatekeeper of Malakir in our hand. Just going to kick that and uh, get rid of it. Very nice. Frex Obliterator, a, a very nice card in Modern, but uh, doesn't really do much if we get to uh, sack it to itself. So, down to eight for the opponent they go. And Nocturnus can be just a nice insult to injury if we get that off the top as well. Last right here, coming in being a 3-3. Three, three. We have Fatal Push on the top as well. Let's just go for a Fatal Push here and then just get in for Lethal. Just gonna discard with the Condemned and do nice game ending damage there we go that was fast let's get into match two here and see what we can do again mono black vampires very aggressive very powerful and uh, if they don't have lots of removal or lots of board wipes then we kind of just decimate them let's see what our hands gonna look like here in this match list we'd like to see something that's a little bit more aggressive uh four lands we'll go with a keeper this is probably fine would have liked to have just three lands three lands is the sweet spot four lands is a little much we want to draw into that fourth land. Noble Hierarch for the opponent here. Let's go for a Fatal Push on that since we think that this might be humans. Seeing Noble Hierarch in turn one makes me think it's humans, especially with the Windswept Heaths and all that kind of stuff. We see two green mana for a Duskwatch Recruiter. Gonna go with an Aristocrat here and pass turn. Now Duskwatch Recruiter can flip, of course, and it flips right now, turning into a 3-3. So we're gonna go uh, Gatekeeper of Malakir, making them sack it. And then we're just gonna get in for one and uh, get lifelink on that. Go up to 21, they go down to 17. See, six cards in hand going to five. Field of Ruin going for a Tireless Tracker here. Let's go for a land into a Captivating Vampire. Could have gone Vampire Nocturnus, but sometimes Nocturnus just does not do anything on that whiff. Um, so let's go for the, the, the straight shot here and attack in. They're going to trade, no problem. Five cards in hand here going for another Tireless Tracker. We take some damage thanks to the last Raider going over for Aristocrat and Aetherborn. And let's just take control of their Tireless Tracker here. <laughs> Seems good, right? Taking control of their board state is normally the best uh, course of action for the Captivating Vampire here. Birds of Paradise from the opponent. And they scoop it up. Nice. They just didn't have anything to combat against that Captivating Vampire. They needed a path, but they didn't have any white mana, so... Not uh, choosing to get white mana there is a little strange, since they had the Windswept Heath, so... Very interesting. I actually don't even put anything from the sideboard into the mainboard here. I think it's probably fine where it's at. We'll, uh, we'll see what it does in the next match here. Just kind of waiting on the opponent. All right, let's get into the next match here, our game here, and see what we can do. I'd like to have a little more of an aggressive hand. Of course, we're going to be going second, so we're on the draw. So this is probably fun, having two black mana in our hand. would like to have had maybe an Aether Vial instead of a black mana, but 
this is still fine. Noble Hierarch for the opponent hit a third black mana off the top, so Cathfading Vampire is definitely on turn three. Let's get in the last Raider and pass turn back to the opponent. Untap here. Going for a Ghost Quarter and tapping up. Let's see, three mana for a... Ooh, Corsair Crufix. Haven't seen this in a while. So for a Gift of Aetherborn and pass turn, can't get through that Corsair Crufix. Bird's Paradise on top with a Noble Hierarch on top as well. Lots of mana producers here. Three mana. Let's go for a Cathvating Vampire. And uh, we probably can attack in with a Gift of Aetherborn this turn. Seems good. Two cards in the hand for the opponent. I'm expecting a path to hit the Cathvating Vampire. No, they're just going to play out the Noble Hierarch here. Lots of creatures on their side of the field. All right, we're going to go up to five here with Gift of Aetherborn and the Highborn here. And uh, maybe just take control of the Corsair. Yeah, that's exactly what we're going to do here. This actually gives us a way to predict what we have on the top of our deck before we even play Nocturnus, which is great. Gives us amazing reach. Collected company for the opponent here. What are they getting into? Might have been a mistake not to wait. But they went with a Devoted Druid and a Tireless Tracker there. Interesting. Opponent's scooping it up. <laughs> Very nice. All right, let's get into match three here. Again, one of the things is, if uh, we had, would have played that Nocturnus, we probably would have just won anyway, but I'm going to go with a Mulligan here and uh, go for a Aristocrat play. I'm all right with that. Let's say my with the opponent. Sacking that on their turn. Interesting play there. Going for a Blood Crypt. Coming in untapped, and then going for an Inquisition of Kozilek. Lots of uh, hand hate here. He assumed they want to get rid of... Oh, they got rid of the Aristocrat. thought they would have wanted to get rid of the Cathlating Vampire, but because we don't have the mana yet, that, that's probably fine. Of course, we need to draw into a second black mana for the Condemned or the Cathlating Vampire. Marsh Flats for the opponent as well. Playing a Swamp here. Going for another Inquisition. Wow. Getting rid of that Condemned there. And a Thought Seize. <laughs> Goodness gracious, the opponent has all their removal. We do top deck a land there. Let's get in for three, go up to 21. They're down to 10, thanks to all the Thought Seizes and all those Crack Feshes and stuff. Last Raider off the top there. Let's get in for three here. Down to seven. We're just going to play out the Last Raider then. And hope we don't die to a Sweltering Suns or a uh, something like that. Anger of the Gods is the card that I'm thinking of for Modern. Four cards in hand. Ta coming in with a uh, tapped Sacred Foundry. Now Last Raider doesn't get us the... Uh, the health ping. Let's get in for five. Drop them down to one. Holding the highborn because we need black mana if something dies. And opponent scoops it up. Nice. That's one of the things with um with modern is if you don't really have much in your hand besides hand hate, and if you're going up against a more aggressive deck like ours, you kind of just die. And um you really need to be more aggressive with your uh your, your mulligans there. With the kind of deck we're, we're, that we're playing. Let's say Mar for the opponent. Uh, gonna go with an Aether Vial on turn one. Seems like a great play, especially because of all the two mana cards in our hand. Blood Crypt there coming in for the opponent. Inquisition once again. Them wasting that Blood Crypt uh, on their turn, hitting them for an extra two points of damage. Getting rid of that Cathvating Vampire is very important for us. Probably gonna go with a uh, Aetherborn this turn. Yep. And pass back to the opponent. Sacred Foundry up for the opponent. Kind of foreseeing maybe a path. Oh, no, we saw a Lightning Bolt. Okay. Removal's removal, I guess. Three cards in hand. Tapping out for a Lingering Souls here. Let's bump the Aether Vial up here to two. And let's go Captivating Vampire. Get that out. One of the things here for us is we can play the uh, Stromkirk Condemned on the instep, which is quite nice. Getting in for two in the air. Down to 18. Can't do anything about that. And go with another Lingering Souls cast. Let's go with an Aether Vial, bring that in, bring the Condemned in. No problem. We're going to take up the Aether Vial to three. We're going to go with a land here and uh, just get in for damage. And see how they want to block. If they double block on the uh, the Cathvating Vampire, we just discard Field of Ruin and get rid of that. But it looks like they're just going to block against the Condemned, maybe? Seems okay. Yeah, we'll do that. Now let's get out a uh, Gatekeeper here and have them sack a Spirit. This builds our board state and shrinks theirs. Now, of course, they do have two Lingering Souls in the graveyard there, so they can flash those back for just two mana apiece. So if they hit another black mana, they can get both of them back. 
which is not good for us. Collect Brutality against the Captivating Vampire here. We're just going to discard the uh, Condemned to make it a 3-3 so it survives the turn. Opponent kind of misplayed around that. Probably should have uh, read the card there, <laughs> but they did not. Let's get in for some damage here. Getting in for uh, 8 points of damage now. Down to 5. Could have discarded that Swamp if we wanted to uh, to pump go and take them down to 2, but we don't really care about that too much. Getting in for 2 in the air on the opponent's side. Go Aether Vial here. Uh, I'm not going to take up two Swamp in hands. Let's just continue to crash in here. Blocking the two three threes, no problem. We're going to discard here and drop them down to two. So from now on, if they uh, if they don't have lots of blockers this next turn... Ooh, Captivating Vampire being Fatal Push. That hurt. And you get two more points of damage in here. A Calestria Highborn off the top would be quite good. Lingering Souls from the opponent. I say no. Calestria Highborn off the top is amazing. Nice. Called it. Uh, let's go with that. And opponent scoops up. Oh, that's so salty. Oh, that's fun. Let's go to match four here and see what we can do. All right, uh, three lands, an opening hand with a Fatal Push, Aristocrat, and a Highborn with a Nocturnus. This is probably fine. Let's go with a Aristocrat and pass. Eight cards in hand for the opponent here. Planes, do I see a path? No, I don't see that. Okay, let's go for a Highborn. Now, this is kind of a mistake. Again, I kind of mentioned this early in the video, but you don't want to play Highborn when you only have two mana. You want to play when you have three mana. So if they have a removal spell for the Highborn here, then we're kind of just out of luck as far as uh, being able to deal with it. What do they have here? Yep, Justice Strike on the Highborn, and we can't do the mana, so it just does nothing. So always a, a downside there. I want to make sure that we always have three mana up for the Highborn when we play it out. Kind of a habit that I uh, I didn't like doing because it was, uh, oh, you know, be trying to play on the curve here. Veteran Motorist from the opponent. We're going to Fatal Push that. This looks like maybe a Vehicles deck from Rotation in Modern now. Interesting. People trying to make Vehicles work in Modern. That's awesome. Let's go for a Vampire Nocturnus and get in for three. There's a Nocturnus off the top as well. Very powerful. Down to 15 from the opponent. Six cards in hand. Tapping out for a Toolcraft Exemplar. Very nice. Very strange seeing these in modern because I, I normally see these in standard, but of course they've rotated. Seeing a Heart of Kieran as well, this is definitely a vehicles list. Let's see what we have off the top here. If we get another a black mana or black card, we'll be able to. Uh... Yes! Tom Kirk Condemn there off the top. Let's get in for lots of damage. Drop them down to three here, up to 30 for us. Opponent tapping with a Toolcraft Exemplar in their turn was a little strange. It's whatever. Lightning Helix from the opponent hitting that Aristocrat. Opponent scooping it up now. All right, so there's really nothing we can bring in from the, uh, the sideboard here to combat vehicles. Like, it's not really that much we can do. We could bring in Dismember if we want to, but we have Fatal Push, so we should be fine as far as removal on the Heart of Kieran's. Keep in mind, if they do crew with Heart of Kieran, Fatal Push can target it, so one of the, uh, the best, you know, situations you can always get into in Standard, but now it's in Modern. I have a one lander, but we have Aether Vial, so we should be fine. Inventor's Apprentice here for the opponent. Gonna go with a Aether Vial on turn one and two Aristocrats in hand as well. So we'll be able to get both of those out next turn thanks to Aether Vial and a land, unless we get into two lands. Could also do Condemned and Aristocrat as well. Getting in for one for the opponent, five cards in hand for them. Let's see what our draw is here. Let's take up the Aether Vial. Get into a Field of Ruin. Again, we really wish we had another black mana, so. If you guys see these Field of Ruin situations and you're like, ah, I would rather just have those in the sideboard, definitely go for that. I think uh, in matchups like this where you never will use Field of Ruin, they're just kind of dead cards. And uh, it feels bad. It feels bad, man. <laughs> Heart of Kieran from the opponent. This does tick up the uh, Inventory Apprentice into a 2-3. No problem. Let's flash in the uh, Aristocrat here on the end step. Make two 1-1s one with lifelink. Tick up the Aether Vial. Play out the Captivating Vampire. Let's just get in for four points on lifelink. Can, of course, flash in the Stromkirk Condemned as well. Um, could have done that to get some extra points if we want to discard a Vampire Nocturnus, but we're going to wait a little bit. Let's see. Four cards in hand for the opponent here. Having out for a Glint Sleeve Artisan. Fabricate one to two-two. They're making a one-one here. Good for crewing on Heart of Kieran, of course. 
Get again here for four and uh, two. Let's Aether Vile in the Condemned to three, three, thanks to the uh, Captivating Vampire. And let's block the two, three. So they're going to take a lot of damage next turn thanks to that play. We decide not to up the Aether Vile there. Might have been a mistake. We get into a Fatal Push, which is quite good against the Heart of Kirin. We could go Fatal Push, uh, or Field of Ruin, into a Get Rid of Stone Quarry and then Fatal Push if we need to. Veteran Motors for the opponent here. Let's see, three cards in hand for them. And passing, okay. Let's stick up the Aether Vial to three and we pull a Condemned. <laughs> not, not great. Want to pop up the, uh, the Aether Vial to get those Nocturnuses, but we could have played the Condemned there. Let's see, two mana here. What are you gonna use that for? Red and white. Justice Strike on the Condemned. Let's discard a card, discard Nocturnus, pump our entire board state, and then sack it uh, to the Aristocrat, making our entire board state 4-4s. Four a huge board state there. They're at 7. They're going to pump the uh, Heart of Kieran here. And then we're just going to Fatal Push that. <laughs> and they scoop! Nice! Alright, let's get into uh, match 5 here. Again, Fatal Push to Heart of Kieran. That's uh, that's the oldest trick in the book in Standard. And uh, is now getting into Modern, and that's awesome. All right, let's get into our last match of the video here. Lots of land in this hand. I'm going to go with a keep, though, with that Aether Vial. Kind of helping us a little bit. Forest for the opponent there. Let's take up the Aether Vial here to one. Got a Lacerator. Not bad. Let's go for a Lacerator play. Should have gone for the Fatal, the uh, Gifted Aetherborn into Lacerator, but we decided to hold up a Fatal Push just in case they play something out next turn. Red, green. A Tepic Huntmaster. Is this dinosaurs in modern? That's awesome. Oh my gosh. Now I want to try and make this work for myself. Let's take up Aether Val here. Go for a Aristocrat play and flash in the Aetherborn. Get in for two here, down to 18. There are some dinosaurs out there that are uh, quite good, so could be a, a modern playable deck. You never know. I probably wouldn't use Huntmaster. I'd probably use uh, something else, but it does make all the vamp the uh, not vampires, all the dinosaurs cheaper. Uh, ticking up? No, we're gonna keep that at two. Play out the uh, another aristocrat here, and let's just crash in. Now, if they block the aristocrat, we're gonna go with a aristocrat sack to itself uh, and make our board state larger. Actually, we're going to do that even if they don't block. Nice. Getting in for 3, 6, and 8. Going for a Ranging Raptor here. Interesting. Uh, not going to take damage from the last Raider. Let's not take up the Aether Bar. Got into a land there. Not amazing. Let's get in for 6 here. Blocking the 3, 3. Let's sack that to itself, getting in for four points of damage, dropping them down to six. Let's see here, six cards in their hand. Going for a Ripjaw Raptor. Would love a Vampire Nocturnus off the top. Let's see. Got another Swampy. Hmm. Well, Gifted Aetherborn can definitely trade uh, or, you know, get rid of both of those creatures, so we're definitely going to do that. They do draw a card. Six cards in hand for the opponent, drawing into their seventh now. Trying to be aggressive on the board state. Five mana for the opponent, going for another Riptraw Raptor. Good value for them. Going to say no. Vampire Nocturnus off the top. Do we get it? Oh, we got it. Nice. Six in the air, flying. Damage. There we go. Again, Nocturnus is kind of a, a, uh, a flip of the coin. You never really know if you're going to be able to get that off every single time, but if you do, it's very rewarding. Uh, bringing in Dismember here over a Fatal Push for this Dinosaur deck. And let's just hit Submit. But also bring an Extra Pate if you want to, but we're going to just uh, kind of keep the deck pretty simplified as it is. Let's see what we can do in the, uh, the next matchup here. Again, Dinosaurs in Modern. Very interesting play there. 
from the opponent. Would really love to uh, kind of build something like this myself, honestly. <laughs> Commune with dinosaurs, very nice. Going for a aristocrat and pass. Got lots of good vampires in our hand here. Captivating vampire being very powerful as well in this matchup. Hot master for the opponent there. Another condemned off the top. Let's go for a condemned here and uh, get in for one. Can. Very nice. Now, the goal here for me is to see if I can get the Cathodic Vampire out on turn three. Pretty much unabated. Let's see. Five cards in hand, three mana. Having out for a Sin Prodder. Interesting play there for the opponent. Would not have expected that in a dinosaur list. 3 2 Menace. Drew into a Dismember. Let's go Cathodic Vampire here. And uh, let's just attack in. See if they want to block with the Sin Prodder on that 2-2. Two -two, because they could trade. Let's discard a Condemn there. Get in for 7. Drop them down to 12. Go up to 24. Say no on the Sin Prodder. Go down to 21. Rip Draw Raptor from the opponent there. Of course, it's cheaper thanks to the Huntmaster. And it uh, looks like opponent forgot to use... Hunt Master to give it haste. Nocturnus for us. Aether Vial on the top there. So again, one of the situations where it just kind of whiffs sometimes, and that's okay. Uh, it'll definitely not whiff all the time. I'm going to throw that forest into the graveyard. They hit a mountain from their hand, or the draw. Going to go with a rage, Raging Sword Tooth here. This does one damage to each other creature, which does mean they draw a card with a Raptor, which is quite good. And if we didn't have a, our Cathodic Vampire on the battlefield, I'd have lost the Aristocrat there. <laughs> Opponent, again, trying to tap for that, that Sword Tooth to uh, attack, but they forgot to attack pre-combat. Drew into an Aether Vial, Swamp off the top, Condemned on the battlefield. Let's just take control of uh, the Raptor here. Really like that play. It turns into a 5-6, by the way, because it becomes a Vampire. And we have Dismember again for any kind of large creature like the Raging Swordtooth, so... Mountain, we're gonna say no, give that to him. Why not? Let's see what we can do here. I think opponent might just be dead if we do with a Dismember on their turn. Opponent's thinking it over though. But definitely an attack if we have a black card on the top is definitely going to uh, close out the match because again, it gives, it gives everybody flying. Savage Stomp from the opponent. Kind of a smart play there, but we're going to go Dismember and uh, get rid of their Sword Tooth. That's probably it there. Come on, black card off the top. Doesn't even matter. <laughs> we'll see. Another Raging Sword Tooth. Nice. This does draw us a card. Ooh, Lacerator is on the top. Very nice. Of course, we draw into that. Do we get a black mana? Black card? We do! There we go. Let's get that swing. Oh, opponent's scooping it up. All right, guys, you saw the matches, you saw the deck list. Let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. Like if you like it, subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you for sticking around for the modern Halloween. This is definitely a test to see how modern would do on the channel. And if you want to see more modern, make sure you leave it in the comments down below. I want to probably cover some hollow ones, some Jund, uh, some tokens deck list and that kind of stuff with modern uh, very, very soon as well. But just uh, let me know in the comments down below if you like this. And of course, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome MTG content just like this. And make sure to tap the bell icon to be notified whenever a video is made live. If you want to keep watching content, here are two more videos for you. This video and many others are sponsored by MTGO Traders and Cape Fear Games. Buy and sell digital singles to build your online collection today with MTGO Traders, and get your paper singles, accessories, and much more from Cape Fear Games. Whatever your magic needs, both places have you covered.